this is Colin and today I'm going to do a review of this Hyper E-Ride City electric bicycle. I'm going to do an unboxing, I'm going to assemble it, going to test ride it and then give you like a short review of my impressions of this bicycle. I didn't see many reviews of this bike online so I thought I'd buy it and do it myself. So hopefully this will be helpful to you for those who are considering this bike. I got it for $398, originally it was $700 on Walmart. And I thought at this price, there's not much to lose and I can always return it if something goes bad. Typically electric bikes are in the $700 plus range. And the reason why I got this bike was because I wanted to get it for my wife so that we can go riding together. So without further ado, let's get this box. Inside the bigger box, there were two more packages, or boxes. This first one, I guess, is the charger for the bike. And this one's probably the pedals. And yep, there are the pedals. I think it's supposed to set, come with a set of tools, too. Let's see if they're in here. Instruction manual, charger, and they do not come with tools. I just read the box and it says that we need additional tools. The tools required are a Phillips head screwdriver, four, five, six, eight millimeter Allen keys, and just a wrench, or nine, 10, 14, 15, 18, millimeter wrenches and pliers with cable cutting ability. So I have some of these tools. You probably won't have a bike tool set. You'll probably have like just uh, the screwdrivers, the Allen keys, adjustable wrench, and that might be it. So the pieces that are loose are the seat, uh, seat post, the pedals, this fender for the front, the handlebar and the front tire so we need to figure out how to get this on. When it came in the box the fork was actually rotated backwards. We need to flip it back out. I think the easiest way. The instructions don't really tell us what to do but I think the easiest thing to do would probably be to install the handlebar first. So for this we use an allen key on the top and it just as it tightens, this pulls forward and it clamps on inside the tube, and that's where you get your tension. You get your 6mm Allen key. You can always adjust this later, but I'm just going to tighten this for now. Make sure it's straight with the fork. Just turning it right to tighten it. And get this straight. Needs to be adjusted later at cam. Next is the seat post. This is a quick release. So we pull that off. You can use this knob right here to loosen it. If it's too tight, stick this in here. And right now, even though it's clamped, it's still too too loose. So we'll just tighten this clockwise on the back until there's enough bite, still loose. You can always adjust this later too. Uh, so that's good. 
Um, there's two nuts on this side. You can loosen those and then you can adjust it back and forward, up and down. If you need to do some fine adjustments, we just want to get it on for now. All right, here are the two nuts that I was talking about. We have two pedals here. They're threaded differently. So the right side, you match with the right. The way you turn this, typically it's lefty loosey, righty tighty. On the right, that is the correct method. On the left side, it's actually the opposite. So on the right, I'm just gonna tighten it by hand for now. So righty tighty. And this is where your adjustable wrench comes into play. I actually have a special one for bikes because your adjustable wrench might not be it might be too wide. So that's where the special one comes in. It's narrow enough to tighten. All right. And these pedals are pretty cheap. If you if you look at it right now, it's um, not rotating very smoothly. This is the left side. It's actually the opposite of the other side, so you're actually turning it left to tighten it. You don't want to make the mistake of threading it the other way and stripping the threads. That's good. So if you look at the screws here, there's a set of nuts on the inside and on the outside. The ones on the inside, they did a pretty good job of tightening it to spec. Um, if it's too loose, you can actually tighten the ones on the inside using like a very flat spanner wrench. And then you don't want it too tight where it binds, but you just want it loose. You can look up videos on how to adjust that. And then you would tighten this one, you hold one side and tighten the other. So that would be this bearing mechanism. What we're interested in now is the outside. And then if you see right here, there's a nut, a washer, and then this piece, it's like an arm. That's what we have to mate to down here. There's a hole right there. So we're gonna do that on both sides. We're just gonna loosen these and then put the wheel on. If you guys see here, on the tire, there's this drive arrow. That's dir the direction that you want the tire to go. So if I rotated it this way, as if I was going forward, the tire is rotating in that direction. That's the direction we want the tire to be on when we install it. Lift this up. Make sure the fork goes in between that nut and those washers that we were talking about. And we want this to be on the outside and tighten that just by hand. Do it on the other side as well. And then at this step, if it's easier for you, you can put the kickstand down and the bike will hold itself in place. If you have a 15 millimeter socket, you can use that. But right now I'm just gonna use this adjustable wrench and tighten it. good. Same thing on the other side. Remember that we loosen this. We got to put this back in place and there you go. All right. We're going to install the front fairing now. So we're just using our adjustable screwdriver to release this nut. I'm going to put this nut through. Put the washer and then the lock nut. Just do it hand tight for now. Come out, come down here. We have these that we need to remove. Repeat the same on the other side. Get 
repeat on the other side. Going to tighten this. There we go. It's not straight. It's straight enough. I have the charger plugged into the outlet and I'm going to plug it in this port right here. And then I notice that this turns red. So I'm assuming that once this turns green, then it finished charging. This does not turn on. There's no charging indicator here. The wheels are pretty out of true. You can hear it rubbing right there. So I have this spoke wrench and I'm just gonna adjust these on the bike, you guys can look online and figure out how to do that yourself. The front wheel itself was is out of true, so it's rubbing right there. It rubs again. If you don't feel like truing the wheels, what you can do is um, use these adjustments. If it's going off to one side, like if it's rubbing on this side, you can tighten this with a uh, flathead or Phillip. You can tighten this with a Phillip head screwdriver and this would push the pad outwards so you can get away with that or you can loosen this, just use an allen key, hold this in place, let off a little slack and then tighten it. The only issue is that the brake pads will be spread apart a little further and the brake lever won't be as responsive. In the front, we also have a pair of keys and some information about the bike. All right, so we assembled the bike together. It's not in its final condition. I would highly recommend that you adjust the front and rear derailleurs. I'm not going to cover that in this video. I also highly recommend that you adjust the front and rear brakes. And if necessary, true the wheels. I'm going to double check every bolt in this bike or anything that can be that can move or be tightened I'm going to double check because a lot of the times they don't tighten it so I just want to double check that so make sure you adjust your brakes you adjust your derailleur lubricate the chain true the wheels if necessary um, have the seat adjusted uh, front and back up and down up and down um, or at the angle for your correct position and then also you can adjust the height of the handlebar. This is where we uh, adjusted it earlier. And then you can also adjust the tilt. So I would highly recommend that you adjust all of these. I'm not going to show you this in this video. You can find that online, but I will be performing this. Tire pressure says 50 to 80 PSI, so we'll set it at 85. The rear tire was 25 PSI out of the box, the front is 18.5, so I highly recommend you inflating your tires. We're gonna quickly go over the functionality of the bike. So let's see, we got this battery right here. It did come with two keys. Just put this here, it says to release, turn it clockwise, battery comes out. This battery weighs, I would say it's good four to five pounds, it's pretty light. So here's one way of charging the battery. Let's put this back in. And then it just snaps into place. And it's secure. So back here we have the hub. Just wired through here. And connects to the crank set. Um, I'm sure the wiring runs through here to the battery and over here we have the controller so this is I noticed that you cannot turn it on or off until you turn the battery on so let's press and hold this the lights come up and now we can turn it on I saw that there's different modes there's the low power assist medium power assist and then the high power assist and this 6km um, as you're walking the bike there won't be any assist, but if you press and hold it while walking, 
it will provide power assist so I guess if you're walking it up a hill it'll make the bike a little easier to to push this power setting right here I heard it'll drop as you're climbing a steeper hill it's just showing like I guess how much power the the bike still has so if you're on flat it should be full and as you're going uphill it's gonna have less power so uh, the other stuff is still the same we have the front brake so adjusting that we have the rear brake lever and adjust that and then we have a six-speed shifter it's not a good idea to adjust this without pedaling but if I were pedaling this chain in the back will adjust based on the setting that I select so without further ado let's test ride this bike I'm on a relatively flat street and I'm just gonna go through the different power modes so this is power mode low I'm just gonna pedal and see what speed we're gonna get so that's one pedal brought us to around four six miles an hour I'm just gonna continuously pedal it's pretty quick um, one thing I noticed is that the bike does not have a thumb throttle. Um, that's something the Buffang one that I have has. So I'm just pedaling at a constant pace and I'm getting around 10, 12, 10, 11 miles an hour. So this is on low. So I'll just keep the gear the same and just pedal approximately the same speed and see how we um, how it compares on different settings. So I'm getting around 11 miles an hour. Not bad. I think if I pedal faster, I'd go a lot faster too. But just for comparison purposes, let's just keep it at this speed. All right. So once we come to the end of the block, I'm going to turn around and go on the medium setting. Alright, medium setting. We're on medium. Just do one pedal. Brought us to around 7 miles an hour. Yep. That's just one pedal. We're just going to keep pedaling. And for the same amount of effort, I'm getting around 15 miles an hour. Before it was 11. Good to the high mode now. Let's do one pedal. Uh, five. Let's try that again. Six, seven. Yeah, there's not much of a difference. I think the last one was seven. Let's see if it makes a difference as we're continuously pedaling. So, same amount of effort. I had to put two hands on the handlebar, holding the camera with one hand and pedaling with the other. So, about 16, 17, 18, I think it could do more, but just for the sake of this purposes, let's say it's 18, 19. Right now, I'm just gonna run through all the, the different power assist settings. So, this is the initial initial pedal. It gets you to like seven miles per hour, it's pretty quick. So, on the lowest, we're getting around 11 miles an hour. Let's go to the medium setting. Brings us to around 15, 14 to 15, and then the highest one for the same amount of effort it goes to around 17, 18 19 I'm just going to coast to the end of the block or end of the trail yep, 
Yeah, that's pretty nice. Coming to a complete stop. Everyone's interested in max speed. I'm gonna put this camera in my mouth or at least the attachment on the end. I'm gonna hold on with both hands and just see how fast I can go. I'm gonna go on the lowest gearing to get a maximum speed and we'll see how we go. Alright, hope, hope this works. I'm just going to pedal around and talk. All right, the max speed that I hit was 20 miles an hour. I think I could have got a little bit more if I was going downhill, but I don't know how much more I could have gotten. I realized, or what it felt like was, the faster I pedaled, the rear motor actually disengaged, and I was just pedaling, and it wasn't giving me any power assist. So I remember uh, earlier, when I was just pedaling on the highest power assist mode, I was getting 18, yeah, 18, 19 miles per hour, and there was like no effort on my part. But now that I have, I was like trying my hardest, uh, it felt like I wasn't getting any power assist, and I gained like one mile per hour. So I don't know if it was worth it. So I guess maybe it's just this bike, this one in particular. If you guys have it, let me know if, if you, like, go all out. Are you getting higher speeds or are you kind of maxed out at 20 miles an hour and the pedal assist is not engaging? I'm gonna quickly go over this walk assist function. So that's this 6km button right here. So if I just push the bike, it's not too heavy, but I guess it'd be an issue if you're going uphill. I'm just gonna press and hold this and it's providing assist. So it makes it a little easier to to push and then if I let go it turns off. Here's my review of the Hyper E-Ride City Electric Bike. Uh, it has a 250 watt rear hub brushless 36 volt motor. The battery is 36 volts 7.8 amp hours and the advertised top speed is 20 miles per hour and that is what I got. The charging time it says is 4 hours. I left it plugged in when I got out of the box for a few hours, probably like three hours, and it was fully charged. And it has a runtime advertised of one hour or 20 miles. I rode it around the block a few times, probably put like two miles on it, and the battery indicator was at the second one, so I'm not sure how accurate this is. I haven't ridden it for 20 miles. Kind of went through the functions before. There's different power assists, low, medium, and high, and a power indicator, and then a walking mode, you press and hold that. It just has the regular V brakes. Um, the brakes are pretty cheap. I, I would just, yeah, run them until they're they're gone, and then replace them with better pads. They're not too bad. Comes with shocks. These are pretty cheap shocks. Um, the bike was not true. The wheels were not true. They were rubbing the pads pretty bad, and I have like three standard spoke wrenches. None of them fit. So I actually just to use a regular wrench to adjust them and I got it pretty true. It doesn't have quick release skewers so I think they sell one that you can convert to that. I'll probably end up doing that because um, we don't have a bike rack. We take the front wheel off, I have to bring a wrench and then just put it into the back of the car and then put this back on. So quick release skewer or lever would be a lot easier. The tires, they're just was it regular, just regular cheap tires? I think they're a Kenda. Uh, let me see if I can find it. I, I don't know, whatever that brand is, but just cheap tires, they do the job. These are just 700 by 38. So they're just cheap tires. Just to get the job done. Notice that the fairings, they're pretty noisy. They rattle a lot. I don't know if it's I didn't 
tighten it all the way, but that was something I noticed rattles a lot. The seat is actually pretty high. My wife is 5'6", and she still has the tippy toe. So if you're like a new rider, it's I think it advertised this bike for people who are 5'4 to 6 feet. Um, if you're on the short end, it'd probably be more difficult to flat foot it, but you can always start in the middle, and then as you're going, put your feet on the bike, but when you stop, put your feet back down. These pedals are pretty horrible. If you notice, they're just like, I don't even know if, what kind of bearings they have in there, but they're pretty cheap. I would replace them. Uh, the components themselves, just standard six feet components. They're like kind of Shimano turny ones. They're low end. I would just leave them on and ride them the way they are. It's nice that it comes with this holder in the back. I like that the battery is removable, so, you know, I guess if you park this somewhere, you can always take the battery out, you can always charge it too. Or you can like, I guess, get another battery and then swap it out if you need to, you can carry two of them and get on your way with that. Everything else, I would just double check all of the uh, nuts and bolts to make sure that they're tight. Uh, components are pretty cheap on it, as expected. But other than that, pretty good bike. In terms of performance, yeah, um, the initial pedal gets you to like seven miles per hour, which is pretty quick. And then power assist one on constant pedal, I was getting like 10 to 12 miles per hour. On medium, I was getting 15. And high end, I was getting 18, 19 miles per hour, which is pretty good for what it is. I One thing I didn't like is that it doesn't have a thumb lever so like the buffang that I had you can use your thumb and you don't have to pedal you can just use your thumb and the bike will be going but I think for four four hundred bucks it's a pretty good deal seems like a solid bike the frame is aluminum just the components on it are cheap things I would replace are the pedals and other than that just keep riding it and yeah all right, that's my review of this bike. If you guys have this bike, let me know. If you have any questions, let me know. Thank you guys for watching, and feel free to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. All right, thank you.